Hey everyone. Um, so here is another way to use the follow me tool. There are so many applications of this tool. Um, orbit to the side of some of the things you've done before. And let's imagine that you're going to use the arc tool to set the path along which another shape is going to follow it. So you can choose any of these arcs that I went over in the arc demonstration. I'm going to do a two point arc just because it's easier. And I'm going to get down low because I want my two point arc to start here end there. And I want it to, I'm not on the two point arc. Control Z, try it again. Two point arc. Start here, end there, and lift it up from center. And if you see on on blue axis, that means you're going up in the air. Great. Pay attention to those hints, because if I come over here to the side and it's on green axis, that's like the Z axis or the X axis. It looks flat, but I want mine to go up in the air. So I'm waiting for that hint from this that I am on blue axis. OK, and then click it in place and you have something that looks like this. Now I'm going to put a shape on the end of this. And my shape is going to be more than a circle because that's just going to be a tube. It's going to look like it's going up a version of this ring that we did. But I want to do something like a polygon and maybe choose a um, maybe seven. Ooh, let's do seven sides. What would that be? It's not a hexagon. I don't know. Um, so pull it out on the end point of that arc flat on the ground and watch what happens when you use the follow me tool to pull it along that arc. Aha. You've got pasta macaroni shapes. Um, so that's one way to apply that. Another way to do it is to what if you had a rectangle and you had your rectangle on the ground like that. And then you built an arc from that rectangle over here, like we just did. But you went up on the blue axis. OK, just like we did. And now, instead of pulling a seven sided polygon, we followed this rectangle along that path. Zoop. Ah, that's interesting. Zoop. There. Now you have this curved shape, like a little walking bridge. And you can literally zoom in and go under the bridge. Zoom out. And there you go. That's a way to use the follow me tool to affect shapes following arced lines. Well, in that same way, we can also create slides, the effect of slides and such. And that's what I want to get to in using this tool, because then you can have like ramps and tubes coming off of things, connecting things like a giant hamster cage if you wanted to. Let's try that real quick before we go. Um, I'm going to draw a rectangle on the ground. I'm going to push pull it into the air so that I can just use that as a support for my slide. OK, and then. We're going to come over and draw an arc from a top edge down here to the ground and try to orbit down so we can tell that this thing is going. Oh, that's interesting. On blue axis. Cool. I thought it was going to hit the ground, but it's actually arcing up in the air like that. So let's try this. Ready? Put a shape at the end of this. It could be a rectangle, it could be a circle. We'll try a circle and put it on that end point where that thing meets that building, that arc. OK, now if I use the follow me tool on this and I just follow this lower half down this, it's going to be a cup like a bowl. If I erase that line and follow it, I'll get a different effect. So let's try that. We're going to follow this lower half along this line. And here comes your slide. Zoop. Cool. And if you then select the end of this and delete it, you have an open slide that you can actually look into. And you can select the top half of this and have this whole thing opened 
like a ramp tube. Really fun. Check out the next one for further follow me fun.